Today, we're going to be looking at assembling a DIY AdLib clone card. I was sent this by Monotech, who has these available for purchase, so if this ends up looking like something you might want, go ahead and check that out in a link below. But today, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this and try it out for myself. This is going to be somewhat of an assembly guide, though this does actually come with directions on assembling this, if you want to follow those, but it also had, just has all the parts you need and ref deses, so you can kind of work your way through it with this side of the sheet. Now this kit comes with absolutely everything you're going to need. The PCB, ICs, the parts that you interface with, the backplane, and even some solder that for um, <clears throat> purposes of having been imported into the United States is definitely uh, Rojas, yeah. And it also comes with a large number of passives, but I'll get to what I've done over there in just a little bit. There have been a few ad-lib clone cards like this, and I really like the ones that are like this, that try and look as much like the original as possible. There are a couple of areas where they are different here, um, and this one has to do mostly with where this bracket mounts on the back, and that it is uh, monogrammed here where the model number would normally be, but elsewise, it's a pretty good clone. The only other real distinguishments are where the board house added a mark inside their stack up, but... I really like this board. Um, the card edge is properly V-scored, so it will slide in easily. The corners are rounded, so you're not going to misalign it. This is just a really nice board. This should work out very well once it's fully assembled into a functional ISA card. Now I'm also going to make this video a little bit of a general assembly guide. So let me talk about what I've done here with all of the passive components. When you order parts from a parts supplier, you're usually able to supply a customer reference number. Now for this particular order, which is not what is in here, uh, the customer reference was Arduino-INA219. But what is a common standard is to give your reference designators for the pad locations on the board for, as the customer reference. So I would know that C11 goes here and then I could just find C11. So that capacitor would go right here. Now this kit is supplied as just a loose bag of passives because I'm frankly organizing all of these by reference designator would be a lot of work. It took me a bit of time to do this. So I wouldn't expect anyone providing kits like this to do this. It would be cool if they could provide a sheet like this to allow you to easily organize these parts. So uh, Monotech or anyone who provides kits like this, feel free to rip this idea off. It would just make life easier for everyone. But I like the idea here of keeping everything consolidated. So what I've done is I've just gone through, uh, separated out all of the parts by the different types of components and uh, taped them onto the sheet. So when I need one, I can just easily go through and pick it off. Now, these are categorized by the values of these components. So I think these were uh, 10, nano, 10 nanofarad, these are 100 nanofarad. When you're assembling a known functional board like this, the values don't matter and it won't be important either what order you put these in. Um, so just having them be organized based on the ref des is really all you need because you just need to know which components go where. Which brings me to the directions included. There are absolutely no problems with these directions, but I'm also not going to follow them. You don't need to put the parts on in any particular order for a completed and finalized board like this. I'm more accustomed to development boards where you don't know exactly what's going to work when you assemble it. So you would assemble the power supply first, then basic logic chips, and then maybe put on the programmable chips and flash them and test. So the order can matter in those. But for something like this, it really doesn't make a difference. As long as you have enough space to put on all the parts, you're going to be good. And everything here solders from the back. There are no surface mount parts, so you're not really going to obstruct anything ever on this board. So frankly, you can put on the parts in whatever order you want. It won't matter. But uh, there are some other good notes on here that you'll want to look at. Uh, specifically, the, uh, the uh, AdLib is designed to power small passive desktop speakers directly. Be careful about headphones. Uh, I didn't know that. So that, yes, that's good to know. So um, when you're going ahead and assembling one of these, uh, read through this. There's some other good notes here that uh, talk about some stuff like the uh, markings on the uh, ceramic capacitors. It tells you how to read those. So this is worth looking through if you uh, get one of these kits. Now you may have noticed there were some parts I didn't put on the piece of paper, and that's because the ref deses really aren't all that necessary. The volume pot can only go in one spot. The same thing with the audio output and the 
axial lead electrolytic capacitor just goes there. So really the ref deses for those aren't even needed. You can get away without them, but they belong on there. So there they will stay. Now the ICs that are included, uh, they have ref deses as well, but you don't need those thanks to a design choice of putting the chip uh, part numbers on the board underneath the ICs. Underneath because you don't want to be able to see those once the card is assembled because the original ad lib didn't have those. But for assembly, special hand assembly, uh, that's really helpful. So uh, you don't need the ref deses. You can just look on the ICs to find the part numbers. Also, technically, this is a transistor that needs a part number but I didn't bother because there's only one. So wherever it goes is where it goes. I didn't even pay attention to where it goes on here. Uh, it's probably, is it that Q1? Yeah, so right there, that's where that'll go. The lead spacing's a little odd, but doesn't matter. So uh, yes, um, those are, I think, all of my pre-assembly tips. Uh, I really like the idea of organizing everything here. So uh, I highly recommend taking the time to do that. This is going to be especially useful if you're gonna work on this over several hours or days and you might want to just do this a little bit at a time and you'll come back and then all the parts will be organized and you can just pick the sheet of paper up and put it somewhere. All the parts are secured with scotch tape so it really isn't gonna go anywhere. This is just gonna make your life a little bit easier. But for now, I think I'm ready to actually get started. And some final notes before we continue. This is an ESD mat. I film all of my videos on a grounded ESD mat. I don't really have a reason other than I kind of like the color. Um, and it just makes it convenient to film everything here without needing to worry about it. But when doing electronics assembly, especially with difficult to replace parts like the actual ad lib part uh, there, you may want to also wear an ESD strap. Um, some people are going to be really sticklery about this, but also parts just are designed better nowadays where this isn't as big of a problem, but older parts are not designed as well. So I am actually going to wear this, although I'm not going to wear it on my hands. I'm going to put it on my ankle. Debate the effectiveness of that in the comments. I just don't want to have to deal with it while I'm also dealing with a camera. And with that last note, let's begin. I'm going to start out by putting all of the chips on the card first. These are uniform in height, so there won't be any differences between the pin heights. This means it'll be nice and easy to solder all of the components level to the board. This will also give me a nice flat plane to put the card back on upside down when I go to attach the resistors next. Rather than cut down the pins poking through the board or just dealing with them being sharp, I've lifted the board up so the pins are just a little bit further down into the through holes. This means I won't have to cut them and I won't have to deal with the sharpness. You want to always solder large parts like this by attaching the opposing corners first. And you can also double check one more time that you have all the parts in there in the right spots before you fully commit to getting them soldered in. The included solder is flux core and flux core solder is fine, but nothing beats a flux pen for making your life a lot easier when it comes to soldering stuff down. Next, after putting the board on a couple of equal height boxes, I'm going to go through and put all of the resistors in the board based off of the ref des. Then I can flip it over, solder them down, and snip off the leads. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for capacitors, but there is one polarized cap in my kit, so I'm going to pay special attention to that one and do it first. And lastly, I'll solder on the large axial capacitor, the volume pot, the audio out connector, and finally attach the rear bracket. All right, that's it, it should be done. Now I've actually cleaned this, which I don't normally bother to do with boards, um, but this time I felt like I kinda should cause it's an ad lib <laughs> um, and I'll want it to look pretty. Uh, but there was something interesting I noticed here. Well, uh, not interesting concerning. Uh, I think the directions may need updated. So uh, here it says, for these three hole capacitor footprints, install one leg in the lone hole and the other leg in one of the two holes in the oval. So let's take a look at this one here. So we can see that I've actually installed both in the oval. There's two ovals. So I'm gonna go with the inner oval. So mine are all installed in the inner oval entirely. And well, is that a problem? If we flip this over, we'll see these two pins are shorted, this one isn't. Now, I imagine this is ground or power. I could look up the pin out of that chip. I might do that in post and stick it up here. Um, and then the other one will be the opposite ground or power. But clearly these are shorted. So 
these two pins are the same thing. So if the directions say you can put one in here and then one in either, that's not quite true. This one would be shorted to this one and this one would be the only other option. Now, in retrospect, I kind of wish I'd installed these caps from the extremes on here. That would have looked a lot better than this, but oh well. Uh, but uh, I definitely would not recommend doing this. I'm going to contact uh, Monotech and see what they have to say. Uh, maybe I'm misinterpreting something, um, and this was how you're supposed to do it, but if you install in the other two pins, it's just not going to do anything. That's that's That would be the problem. It wouldn't do anything. The capacitor would be electrically inert. Well, that's it. The card's assembled. It's gone from a pile of parts to a fully functional, hopefully, ad lib. So it's time to test this out. And I'm going to do that with my Compaq Portable. Since you last saw my Compaq Portable, I moved my XT-IDE adapter into it and my Tecmar Captain, so this is actually the only computer I could use. Alright, the card's in there. Let's turn it on and see if we can make ad-lib sounds. Alright, it started up just fine. Um, let's try Planet X3 because that will run on here and I know supports ad-lib. For comparison though, we're gonna start out by just running the PC speaker version. This is really good PC speaker music actually, so <laughs> it's hard to beat this, but let's see if we can. All right, gonna rerun PX3, CGA, and ad lib. Oh yeah, I would call that a success. Well, I would say that is a complete success. The AdLib card is working fantastically. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. Now, obviously this is supported by a lot of software out there. There are many games that could take advantage of it. Even stuff like Doom can use the AdLib card. For now, I'm very happy with how well this is working. And uh, I hope this was helpful to anyone who's trying to put one of these cards together themselves. I know I kind of f flew through some of it, but once you get the hang of putting parts in a circuit board and soldering them, there's not a whole lot to it. Well, if you guys uh, want to support the channel, I am on Patreon, but for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.